Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this video tutorial, we're going to, get, we're going to introduce you to what, we, uh, to what we call the Beginner's Guide to Tire Modeling. And really, the point of this tutorial is to really introduce you to some insights and some things that are really going to help you get on top of your tire model, but more importantly, to understand what your tire model is doing. And what we're going to be discussing is we're going to be breaking this tutorial into three parts. The first part of this tutorial is we're going to be talking about the Chassis Sim V3 tire approximation. Now, this is an approximation of the Chassis Sim version 3 tire model. And it's a very, very use, and you'll find it's going to be a very, very useful language for really understanding what each component of your tire does and really how that translates to what the tire is doing and more importantly, why the tire is doing it. In the second part, we're going to be talking about um, the, tire, the chassis sim version free tire model quick uh, tire model quick start, which is in fact a really useful way to get going with the tire model. And we're going to give you some practical examples about how you can manipulate that tire model quick start um, to really understand what's going on with your car and to dial in a really, really rough tire approximation. And in part three, we're going to be talking about the chassis sim tire force estimation, the chassis sim tire force modeling, and we're going to give you some insights into the procedure in which you should go about doing your tire modeling. So first things first, let's talk about the chassis sim version free tire approximation, because really, this is sort of the backbone of what we're going to be discuss this is going to be the backbone of what we're going to be discussing and ultimately what we're going to be optimizing so really this sort of forms the basis of what we're going to be doing hence why we're dedicating part 1 of this tutorial to it now at its heart the chassis sim version free tire model can be broken down into five simple equations now do not get freaked out by the maps all the maths represents is basically a language to describe what goes in where. It's as simple as that. I know when people see algebra, they usually scream in terror and run towards the hills. But in reality, all this means, uh, what, uh, what we've illustrated with the version free time model is we're simply illustrating what does what. So let's go through it one by one. You'll see in the first equation, I've got um, the maximum self-aligning, uh, uh, the maximum self-aligning torque, and in the third equation, I've got what the actual self-aligning torque is. Let me not go into this right now on the simple principle that you'll find that that self-aligning torque is more going to be appropriate for when we start talking about driver in the loop simulation, which is probably not our focus here. Our focus here is to classify the traction circle radius of the tire and how this translates into the lateral and longitudinal forces. And as you can see in our second equation, F prime max, we've got that as a function of vertical load FZ and tire temperature TT, which is an idealized tire temperature. Now, that F prime max, all that means is traction circle radius. For those of you familiar with Pajaka, it's the D term. It's all it is. There's no black magic there. All it is is just a function of vertical load and idealized tire temperature. And the lateral force, Fy in our fourth equation, is a function of slip angle, vertical load, tire temp, multiplied by a camber force multiply uh, by a camber force multiplier, multiplied by the traction circle radius, and our longitudinal force is the slip ratio is normalized is a normalized function of slip ratio uh, vertical load idealized tire temperature multiplied by a longitudinal camber multiplier multiplied by the traction circle radius let's break down what each of the before i get into the formulation of each of these terms let's just go over the significance of each of uh, of each of those terms okay function of alpha fz and t this uh, uh, this is, uh, is, a, is a normalized function of slip angle that is bounded between minus 1 and plus 1. For those of you, for, and ditto for slip ratio, it's a normalized function between minus 1 and plus 1. Now, do not get freaked out by the F, Z, and T terms here. If, if truth be told, I just threw that in basically to make uh, people in the upper echelons of the sport happy. But in reality, you'll find that the vertical load and tire temp effects on slip ratio are more the cherry on top as opposed to things that you absolutely have to get right. 
Uh, so in reality, this function just falls away to being a function of slip angle uh, for laterally and a function of slip ratio longitu uh, uh, longitudinally. And that is bounded between minus one and plus one. It's usually a symmetric function. And for those of you familiar uh, familiar with Pajaka, this is that the, this is the uh, uh, this represents the, uh, all those horrible trigonometric terms? So that is bounded between minus one and plus one. The camber uh, uh, the camber multiplies here cfy um, underscore mt laterally and mu prime traction circle is effectively the way we represent the traction ellipse. This will dictate these two terms here, CF, CFYMT and mu prime traction circle effectively dictate the shape of the traction ellipse as camber varies. That's all that represents. And finally, that is multiplied by the traction circle radius. That's all, that's all we're representing here. And this is the heart of the chassis inversion-free tire approximation and what we are going to be, uh, be manipulating. And really, the key thing to understand here is, once again, every, all of your tire forces basically come down to basically the traction circle radius multiplied by multipliers for camber, slip angle, and slip ratio. That's all it. Uh, uh, that's uh, that's all it is. So don't. So there's no need to be confused or freaked out by this. That's basically what this represents. Now, the first trick for the chassis inversion free tire approximation is getting that traction circle radius plot of load and temperature right. You can be forgiven a multitude of sins. In uh, uh, You can be forgiven a multitude of sins in tire force modeling, provided you get this right, because this is effectively the tire footprint. Now, the traction circle radius can be visualized as a function of tire temperature multiplied by a function of vertical load. Now, that vertical load is usually represented by a fourfold pol polynomial. And the reason we've gone for the fourfold polynomial is in reality, you have a lot of tire approximations that just have a linear drop off of coefficient of friction versus load. That may be all well and good for a road car tire, but it simply does not apply for a race car tire. Hence, one of the things we found that um, with a 4 4 lookup, you can use six control points, which is what we've illustrated here, and basically vary those six control points to get the tire characteristic as weird and wacky as you need it. Now, in terms of function of tire temperature, a very useful function that we found is that the function of tire temperature is 1 minus k times t minus t optimum on t optimum squared, where t optimum is all in Kelvin. Now, where t is less than t optimum, we have k being the pre-slope and t greater than t optimum, and that k being the post-slope. So what we can do is that we can really represent what the tire is doing in the as, as the tire temps build up um, before the optimum temperature, and basically as they um, drop away. Now, some rough rules of thumb in terms of the values for um, K pre and K post, when it's when you've really got something that's temperature sensitive, you're looking K at about 10 above. If you're looking at stuff, you know, in roughly in the middle of the ballpark, you're looking for K values of about in the order of about five to 10. So really, this is the thing that you're going to be representing the traction circle radius of, uh, of, with. But the real key thing to get right is you basically you just have these six control points. Now, in reality, you could probably choose more. But the nice thing about six is it's a nice round number because you can just it gives you just enough resolution to make that curve as weird and wacky as you need it without going completely overboard. And so basically, what you do is you assign these six control points and you do a polynomial for uh, and you do a polynomial fit. So that gives you that compromise between representing nonlinear behavior but still getting it nice and smooth and consistent. Now, what do you choose for the normalized function, which is our function of alpha or slip ratio? Now, you can either choose a Pajaka function, which you have force factor pl plotted against normalized slip, um, which is uh, uh, which is your typical Pajaka curve. However, one thing I would probably recommend that you try is a force factor, which is a very simple uh, third order approximation of CF1 alpha plus CF3 times al uh, uh, alpha cubed. And some really good rules of thumb is that CF1 is about one and a half and CF3 is a minus, uh, uh, minus about 0.5. This is actually one of the things that comes in the chassis sim defaults. And we've actually found that that over the years has proven to be a very, very effective approximation. And 
one of the nice things about it is that you'll see in the typical Bajaka formulation, beyond your peak slip angle, it drops off a bit, but it doesn't drop off a lot. You'll find that with this uh, normalized force factor curve, the drop off beyond the slip fa factor is actually quite pronounced. So that's a really good thing um, to do. Now, rough rules of thumb, you choose peak slip angles in the order of six to seven degrees, and your typical values for peak slip ratio is in the order of about eight to 10%. Sometimes with slip ratio, you might need to go a little bit lower, sometimes 7%, sometimes I've even had to go down to about five, but six to seven degrees in terms of peak slip and eight to 10% in terms of slip ratio, that's a pretty good ballpark. Uh, to get going, so I uh, uh, so there. Uh, I mean, occasionally from time to time you will need to go larger. Particularly, you will find some US tires have really favour some really really big slip angles in the order of about eight or nine degrees. But usually, I can count the number of cases I've had to do that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is characterizing the camber sensitivity and tractional lifts. Now, what the camber sensitivity does is it really dictates what that tractional lifts looks like. And what it also does is it also dials in how sensitive your tires to camber are. Now, a very useful approximation we have found is that, that we have found is that you've got Cam is that you've got your camber multiplier is one minus SFCY multiplied by delta camber minus delta optimum on a hundred squared. SFCY is and effectively it's a parabolic it's a it, that's a parabolic curve with its peak value of one at your dynamic camber. Now what delta optimum represents is it represents the camber at which the tire is going to generate its maximum grip. Now, one of the problems with, uh, well, one of the, th I won't say problems, but one of the um, idiosyncrasies of the Pacheco formulation is the fact that they actually have a linearized function for camber. Now, that's all well and good if you're only ever going to play around with cambers in the order of about half a degree, a degree, a, de a degree and a half. But in reality, as we all know, the modern race tire is a big bulky thing. And if you were to just purely use that approximation, it would recommend camber, sensitive, uh, camber settings of about 15 degrees, which we all know is a complete nonsense for a race tire. And the advantage of this is that you can tune SFCY and your delta optimum to really dial in those nonlinear camber characteristics. And we have found that to be a very, very useful tool. Now, in terms of the longitudinal multiplier, we have mu multiplier multiplied by one minus SFCX delta camber squared on 100. Now, all that, now what that equation represents is that your optimum longitudinal grip will stand when the, the tire is standing straight up at zero degrees. That's what that represents. Now, in terms of some rough rules of thumb, SFC, uh, SF underscore C underscore Y, for something that's very camber sensitive, you're looking at about two to three, uh, at values of two to three plus. That's when things get really sensitive. There have been times I've actually had to go to about five to six for some t uh, tires, albeit they were tires that um, looked as though they belonged on the Batmobile as opposed to a race car. Ditto for numbers of uh, for SFC un uh, underscore X. When you're looking at camber sensitivities, typical open wheeler numbers, you're looking at about two to three. Sedan numbers will tend to be in the order of about 0.5 to one and your middle of the ranges are about one to two. So you'll also notice here that I've got terms here to indicate uh, to take into account vertical load. If you're starting, I would probably just leave the k underscore c underscore y terms and the k underscore c underscore x terms as zero for the time being. Do they have an effect? Absolutely. However, just to get going, just remember this is the cherry on top. So just remember one of the biggest mistakes you can make with tire modeling is you go too complex too soon. Forget that because I have seen so many people go really complicated really fast and all they do is wind up by completely and utterly confusing themselves. They run around like a bunch of, uh, they run around like a bunch of absolutely headless chooks. And at the end of the day, they actually don't get very much done. Remember the key to modeling particularly modeling race cars, is you start simple. Start on a very basic model, get the fundamentals right, the big ticket items right, then you can get cute later. 
So that's a really, really key. Uh, that's a really key thing that I really want to emphasize. Now, in terms of what that looks like uh, graphically, um, the first plot here represents the camber variation laterally. And as we can see, we've got our delta camber optimum where we've got CFY MT at one, and that's a plot of delta camber horizontally. And you can see this is our delta camber optimum. Now, the bigger SFCY is, the more pronounced that curve is going to be. Now, in terms of the longitudinal variation, as we can see, we've got our optimum at our mu init at a zero at um, zero degrees, and we've got our um, curvature, which is um, uh, which is our SFCX, which is going to dictate how uh, 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 which is um, going to dictate how pronounced that curve becomes. Now, to review, remember the guts of the chassis sim version free tire approximation is we've got our traction circle radius, which is a function of load and temperature. And Fy is our normalized function of slip angle multiplied by our, cam uh, uh, by our camber multiplier that dictates the traction ellipse in the y direction multiplied by our traction circle radius. And longitudinally, it's our normalized function of slip ratio, but once again is bounded between minus one and plus one multiplied by our um, uh, camber longitudinal multiplier that dictates the track uh, that dictates the longitudinal component of um, the traction circle ellipse multiplied by um, the traction circle radius. And to dial those in, uh, uh, now to dial those in, remember the key thing is for our traction circle radius is we've got our six control points from uh, uh, that goes from zero load to full load of the tire. And once again, you can manipulate that to uh, get a four four to, uh, to get a four four to fit. We've got our function of temperature. Now, if you're just starting off, don't worry about the function of temperature for the time being. Remember, remember uh, the Danny Nolan tire modeling mantra. Start simple, then get cute later. Don't do, don't do it the other way around. You will head screw yourself so fast, you will not know which way is up. And remember, choosing the normalized um, slip function, you can either choose the Pajeka function, or you can use the chassis sim normalized slip angle or curve approximation. Whatever you choose, it's up to you. And lastly, characterizing our camber traction ellipse and to visualize that and to look at that visually, we've got this function. And just remember, for the, and if you do need to tune in the traction circle ellipse, that's where our mu init, uh, that's where our mu init comes in. And just remember some rough rules of thumb Mu and it will basically dictate what, uh, or where to go in terms of what the traction circle ellipse looks like. The SFCY and SFCX dictates just how sensitive these things are going to be to camber. So once again, you're going to have to do a little bit of, uh, you're going to have to do just a little bit of tuning to start off with to really get a feel for that. I should also say, once again, to start off with, the KCY terms, the K underscore C underscore Y terms, and the K underscore C underscore X terms, leave a zero to start with. Now, if you get stuck, if you go into the directory that you install chassis sim in and you go into um, the help directory, there's a PDF file called the chassis sim version free tire model documentation. And in here, you will find a complete docu a complete documentation of the chassis MV free tire model approximation that you can write out as an INI file, but more importantly, you will find a description of each of these elements with all the mathematical definitions in there. So really, if you haven't got everything in this tutorial, that's okay because you can open up this document in the chassis M help directory, print it off, read it again and really get to terms and understanding that. So that uh, uh, so this concludes part one of our um, tutorial. And in part two of the tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the tire model quick start, where I'm going to show you how to manipulate all of these variables. And in particular, here we've got the lateral camber sensitivity as SFCY, the longitudinal camber is there, SFCX. This is our init longitudinal multiplier. This is our traction circle radius um, curve. And these are the temperature properties. And we're going to discuss in part two how to really manipulate that. So that's what's waiting for us in part two. But once again, watch this video again. 
read the chassis sim version free tire model documentation in um, your help directory of chassis uh, of your chassis sim and we'll see you in part two